the top 10 Billboard chart topping rock songs of the uh, 2010s. I'm not really a really big fan of this um, of this decade because it's just kind of like middle of the road. It's all right. It is kind of generic, honestly, because the 2010s did kind of lose their uh, or the rock songs did kind of fade into obscurity after the 2000s. So. It is kind of disappointing to check out this list because the well, well, even the 60s and 70s were kind of you know kind of boring honestly. You know, I thought way better of them, but we're of course we're talking about the billboards here, so of course it's kind of gonna suck. So there we go. Uh, 2010s, the thumbnail is the Black Keys, which I find a boring band honestly. I don't really care about them. They're not horrible, but they're not the best, so they're what you know. Kind of boring to me. I cannot really think of anything out of the 2010s. What what is there? You know, you know. There's a dancing with Maggie May or something from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I, I don't think that's topped anything. No, I don't think so. Uh, what else is out there? You know, which you know popular band is still active? You know, Pearl Jam. But you know, Pearl Jam is pretty much like, um, well, not as big as it used to be in the 90s, so they don't probably are on here because after the 90s, they just kind of, you know, well, they did their own alternative thing. So, yeah, I honestly do not know. You know, the Peppers are still active, but you know, they're pumping out hits left and right. Or they're, they're still creating get you know creating hits here and there, but not a lot. For some reason, uh, Fido has a lot of dislikes though. There's six thousand likes and three and a half thousand dislikes, so that is a lot for some for some reason. Oh, probably the Kings of Leon is gonna be on there. You know, you have to think of like shitty rock bands nowadays. Oh my god, I, I'm not excited for this list. Well, let's get it out of the way. What the fuck is this? Who said rock was dead? This is like dubstep old what? garbage. I mean, honestly, it is their only good song by Imagine Dragons because Imagine Dragons is one of the worst bands of all time, honestly, that I've ever heard in my life. I mean, you, you thought that uh, you thought that that Sweet Child of Mine's solo and vocal were degrading. Then listen to some Imagine Dragons; they're a thousand times worse than Guns N' Roses. Mojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Billboard chart-topping rock songs of the 2010s. That was, that was kind of like a low a low blow for Dave Grohl, you know, to add. Coldplay and Justin Bieber into the same category of like generic pop garbage Just putting that on, on car stickers and stuff like that. That was kind of like a low blow honestly because I mean I mean Coldplay isn't the heaviest band ever but putting them next to you know the fucking disgrace to Canada That is just well, We're it's kind of insulting. We're focused on the rock songs of the decade that became Billboard number ones Whether it was the Hot 100, Rock or Alternative Charts Blackies, uh, what is this? Number 10, Come a Little Closer, Cage the Elephant. I mean, whoever heard of this one, please. South American tour, a Brazilian sunrise, and the unknown mysteries that lay before him, lead singer Matt Schultz wrote a meditative and slightly melancholic composition to capture his experiences. to the singer, Come a Little Closer would soon become one of the surprise hits of 2013, with its cryptic lyrical content and a musical bed. The music video is pretty bad. Appeal. Look, it looks like a trip on bath. At this very moment, some of you Mojoholics may be learning of Cage the Elephant for the first time. And well, take the Are there honestly the people out there, you know, Mojoholics? Are, are, do those people exist? <laughs> You know, because I forgot about the whole thing, but if you're actually a mojo-holic, then you're fucking retarded, honestly. But ominous, your whole 50% of your channel is dedicated to watch mojo. Yeah, but it doesn't mean I'm a fan. I'm, 
you know, I created so much watch Mojo. I'm only a, well, I am subscribed with my other channels to watch Mojo, but that is just to check it out, you know. I'm not, you know, I'm not, oh, fucking hell, I'm not a fan, but... They, they make some interesting videos, but I'm not a fan of their, their concept, their entire channel, so... It's kind of it's kind of difficult my relationship with Watch Mojo. I am subscribed to them, but they don't want to. You know, they're just kind of like um, a time waster channel for me. You know, when when I'm bored, I'm just I just watch Watch Mojo. If I if I don't find anything better, they're a time waster channel for me. There we go. Perfect. Oh, what is this? This sounds like a num from a U2. It sounds really bad. It sounds really bad. It's probably Muse. Probably from their um, no, how's this album called? That's, it's a really bad album, but it's like a dubstep kind of album. But um, I've, I forgot the title, but it looks like a sort of uh, brush, like a dust brush or something. That's a really bad album. Madness, Muse. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, um, I would probably put Muse on there, for sure. I mean, I, I just know Muse. I'm not a fan of their, um, I don't know the, the title anymore, but it's, it's a pretty bad album, honestly. Band Muse captured this debilitating form of madness with an appropriately entitled... What's this called, Madness? ...title tune that topped the entire charts for a solid 19 weeks, large in part to the lead singer Matthew Bellamy's hypnotic vocals. <sighs> Sounds like he's ejaculating. An experimental track for the rock band, the song explodes into an emotional climax with stunning guitar effects and a beat that just won't quit. <laughs> with this cerebral number one, the world received yet another powerhouse release from one of the most esteemed rock bands of the last 20 years, and certainly one of the best live acts of all time. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen them live yet, but I will not say they're one of the best, though. <laughs> I mean, I cannot judge, but like Muse, they are a good live band, though, but, but almost, yeah, you haven't seen them live, yeah. I mean, but you never hear about it, though, so I think they're a little bit too young to call, to call them an all-time band, but, well, you know, they're pretty good, but... You know, I honestly think this song is kind of mellow and boring and slow and all that. I, I think it's kind of bad, honestly. But I mean, yeah, there, there, there are way worse bands of Muse out there, so... Oh, this is a pretty good song. Uh, yeah, the school shooting song, of course. Uh, Pumped Up Kicks by Foster the People. I do dig this song. I do dig Foster the People. Yeah, this was a big hit right here. When former jingle writer Mark Foster wrote this story of a teenage homicidal maniac, it would be an understatement to say the indie music scene went crazy. single to reach number one on the Billboard charts with a catchy as hell chorus and a beat that even mainstream music listeners could latch on to the song I mean even that whistling part it's uh, you know it's kind of cheesy but it's, on it's pretty Billboard good Hot 100. yeah good pick oh uh, Imagine Dragon I mean yeah, you can put this song on there, but it's pretty much your only good song, honestly. Number seven, radioactive. Imagine dragons. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, let's be honest. The opening thirty seconds of radioactive may not immediately grab your attention with all the. No, but that score us. That score to get you. As soon as the beat drops, you'll be right on board and singing along. I 
It's a terrible music video though. Horrible. And perhaps that's why this Imagine Dragons mega hit stayed on the Billboard Hot 100 for 87 long weeks. With a universal theme of Jesus Christ. And a music video featuring How long is that? That's almost two years. Phillips and a I mean, it's good, but it's not that good. Alexandra D'Addario. Radioactive slowly became one of the most surprising hits of recent years and led to a mythical collaboration with Kendrick Lamar. <sighs> Whatever happened to Imagine Dragons? I mean, I really want to like them, but they're just fucking terrible, honestly. What is this? Uh, I want to say it's the Black Keys, but I believe they're number one on this list, so. I have no clue who this is, honestly. Oh, um, yeah, it's Rope by the Foo Fighters. This is a great song, either. Number six, Rope, Foo Fighters. Did not know that it was a Billboard chart topper, but sure. Okay, everybody loves a little nostalgia, and this throwback hit captured a 90s vibe across the board. shot music video to the progressive style chords and the catchy chorus, Rope was built to become a mainstream hit and it topped the Billboard Rock Charts for 20 weeks. Oh, fuck yes. The chorus, Rope was built to become a mainstream hit and it topped the Billboard Rock Charts for 20 weeks. Damn. I mean, that should say enough how much, you know, rock music has declined in in recent years you know because well it is a great song i love rope i love that whole um lasting light album or something everlasting light it is a great album it arguably is the best Foo Fighters song really you know um two decades into their career that's pretty impressive honestly so almost two decades but um but yeah honestly it's not it's not surprising to me that it topped it, but it is it is just kind of surprising to me honestly honestly that the Billboard chart recognizes um talent over qual or you know actual quality over popularity because well you have some shitty rock songs probably but Foo Fighters is pretty much one of the biggest bands ever you know especially nowadays so yeah that's probably an appropriate hit for them so you know, there's not a really wide variety of rock music now, so, you know, better have the Foo Fighters on there. In fact, Foo Fighters debuted at number one, and when the momentum finally slipped, they immediately took over the top spot again with another classic <laughs> entitled... Uh, walk. Walk. walk I prefer the Pantera version, though. Foo Fighters have been releasing some of the greatest rock songs of recent times, and they are showing no sign of slowing down. I just love the kind of, dun, 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 you know, the kind of fade in, kind of riff of rope. I love that song. They're in a colorful box. Kind of, you know, seizure inducing, but I don't give a shit. It's a great video, great song, great album. Damn, you know? Good stuff, Foo Fighters, good stuff. Uh, oh my god, uh, Pompei Babasta. This is not a rock song, this is like pure pop music. Number five, Pompeii, Bastille. Shitty pop song, great live album, if you know what I mean. If you're familiar with Roman history, then you'll most likely be familiar with the inspiration behind this next number one hit. But if you close your eyes, I just hate that halo chorus. <laughs> An instant indie pop smash, Pompeii became Bastille's This is indie music, really. As the song hit number one on multiple US charts and number five on the Billboard Hot 100. The song takes on for a metaphorical story of modern love as the lyrics convey someone trying to see the light and hoping not to be crushed by the figurative ash of seismic passion. Oh, 
just hate it. Well, I don't hate really the song, but it's just really generic, honestly. I've heard it so much on the radio. Um, I honestly, honestly am kind of confused because Bast Bastille is such a terrible artist name. Maybe it's his real name. Too bad for your son. Um, but honestly, I always confuse his name with this song, you know. Oh, it's the artist Pompey with Bastille. Oh, no, it's Bastille with Pompey. You know, I don't fucking know. But probably 100% of you guys are like, what is Pompey? Outside of the Pink Floyd album. Well, you guys immediately immediately think of that and I think of this shitty song. Uh, this song, it is kind of mellow and slow, I do enjoy it, but it is kind of too edgy for me probably, it's too angsty. It's a good song though. I did really dig this song when it, whenever it came out, I believe five years ago, 2013, because it's mellow, it has a good piano chord right there, good piano tone. So I just really like this song. It's it's kind of awkward for me now, but it's still still well one of the best songs <laughs> nowadays at least. So number four, take me to church, Kosher. Never did speak. Now here's a case of a struggling singer songwriter. The vocals are good, piano is a nice touch. Uh, the chorus is kind of. Uh, for me, it's kind of alright, but it's an overall good song, I would say. But if you hear a song like that, you're like, this is really rock nowadays, you know. Rock is kind of, you know. I don't want to say I, I agree with Gene Simmons, but it is kind of that, honestly. You know, the, the guy isn't full of shit, although, well, a lot of shit is in him, but not fully. So, um, well, you know. Still one of the better songs out there today. Although it's not really rock, it's more pop. Media with themes of sexuality and religion, take me to church. Utterly transformed the life of Andrew Hosier Byrne. As a controversial song peaked at number two on the Hot 100 and reached number one on the rock charts. It sounds kind of like a blend of like classic rock and modern rock. Yeah. Phoenix, good name, good title. Tail end of the 2000s, the song hit the top of the alt rock charts in February 2010, kicking off the new decade in style. Although you might have heard 1901 on numerous commercials, it only managed to reach no. 84 on the Hot 100. But it's without a doubt one of our favorite indie jams of the 21st century. That sounds pretty good. Could have thought this uh, particular chart too. Oh, it's not number one. There we go. Number two, tighten up the black keys. Most of all, for years, a blues rock tandem. Yeah, I just think. The quality of this video is pretty good actually. Looks like really like HD-ish. It's pretty good. Like really crystal clear imagery right there of these fucking kids flirting with each other. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much the better, best thing about the Black Keys, honestly. Um, yeah, I don't really like Black Keys. I mean, they're alright. They're 
definitely one of the better rock bands out there today, but rock is pretty much dead at this point. I do respect that Black is kind of li uh, lifting up the, the torch in a kind of like filled ocean with pop garbage. And the Black Keys are kind of like uh, holding their tor torch off above the, the shitty pop garbage, kind of rising above. I do like that kind of mentality, but they're just not really doing it for me, honestly. Around bands around. And with this track about wild love, the Black Keys not only scored their first Hot 100 hit, but took home a Grammy for Best Rock Performance. What is this music video? Recorded at the legendary Muscle Shoals, <laughs> Up was born out of some downtime as Patrick Carney, Dan Auerbach, and... Oh, Bruce this is such a funny video, though. ...a garage rock jam for the ages. Like some kid wanting to flirt with some chick or something, and the chick eventually playing with the nerd, and the nerd just flipping off the other kids. <laughs> and then the same thing happening with the adults. And given the playful nature of the music video, the entire process seemed to be one hell of a time. Of course, rock fans agreed, as Tighten Up topped the charts and transitioned the Black Keys to mainstream stars. <laughs> <laughs> just rips out a symbol and just smashes one of the band members with the symbol. Like, the chick is mine! It's a pretty funny video though. If only the song was a little bit better. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Ain't it fun? Ain't it fun by Paramore? Oh, I do really like this melody right here. The, yeah. That's a good melody right there. I, I did really like that. Kings and Queens from 30 Seconds to Mars, which was released in 2009. So why is it on there? Who knows? Yeah, 30 Seconds to Mars just sounds like noise to me, honestly. Uh, the Sound of Winter by Bush. Yeah, Bush is still a thing. Fuck me, man. Little talks of monsters and men. This was another one of those songs like Take Me to Church that sounded critically acclaimed. I believe it got some critical acclaim. But the haze and the oh and the, mm, the garbage like that, it just sounds really dated to me now. The song has aged terribly though, honestly. I mean, the music, I mean, this is kind of like reverse of the Black Keys. I mean, the music video was, or no, 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 exactly like the Black Keys. The music video was pretty good, but the song itself is kind of shit, honestly. Lampshades on Fire by Modest Mouse. No, that's right. Next one. Oh yeah, the Arctic Monkeys, of course. I was always kind of a Arctic Monkeys detractor always said, oh, they're really boring and they're so overrated. I still think that, but yeah, definitely the biggest rock band today. And yeah, deservedly so number one, because they're pretty, pretty much the only memorable act out of the 2010s, honestly. Number one, do I want to know? Arctic Monkeys. Have you got color that you? For this number one single recorded in I really do not like AM, you know, the band and the album, but I mean, I have to say it's number one though, it's such a big hit. California, Arctic Monkeys explored themes of unrequited love and the undeniable urge to drunk dial. All of the chicks look the same. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that you might get dumped. The music video, though. Do I Wanna Know has become a popular cover song and also became a modern anthem for young rock bands with its marching rhythm and meditative lyrics. So, do you agree with our Sure, just. What's your favorite Billboard chart-topping rock song of the 2010s? 
the dirty head speech room bro. For more mind blowing top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe okay. to watchmojo.com. <laughs> Music video is pretty good. Um, yeah, the lyrics are honestly kind of boring, honestly. Honestly, honestly, honestly. Um, but yeah, not really a surprise to me. Uh, we are going to check out the uh, comments for a bit. Kind of have an itch right now. Using a guitar for a small part of your song doesn't make it rock exactly. I mean, but most of these songs weren't rock. Most of this It Ain't Rock, exactly. With song with Eddie Vedder, a live uh, profile picture. I mean, that's Muse song. That that was not rock right there. If this is the best ro uh, of rock in 2010s, then rock is dead, exactly. I mean, you really do, do not want to agree with Gene Simmons there, but you kind of want to. <laughs> uh, Jimi Hendrix would punch you in the face for a list like this, exactly. Uh, well, Jimmy Anderson isn't a guy like that, but I, I get your message. I wouldn't consider most of these rock songs that are mo more indie pop, exactly. The title should say indie and said because cl clearly half of these songs are indie, not rock. The Arctic Monkeys and Black Keys are the only ones that belong on this list, exactly. Not a, not a fan of both of them, but honestly, they're pretty much the only rock acts on there. I mean, yeah. I, Really don't know. Where Slash and Miles Kennedy Skillet. Uh, Skillet is arguably one of the worst bands ever. Shitty ass Christian band. Hillstorm, Adventure, Fold Stone, Sour, Papa, Papa Roach. Also one of the worst bands ever. This is the worst list you came up with. I mean, but you requesting all of those acts. Jesus Christ. I mean, Miles Kennedy is a horrible singer. Slash is a mediocre, overrated guitarist. I mean, it's. Jesus Christ, your list. Just create a new list for pop rock, seriously. We're in the very middle of the 2010s decade. Don't you guys think it's a little early for this? Yeah, but th they did a series, so there we go. Yeah, yeah, this should, this should say so far, but whatever. I feel like it was symbolic that, that them saying who said rock was dead and then Imagine Dragons playing straight after. I mean, that's not really a rock song, I'm sure. Compa comparing this list to 70s, 80s and 90s just makes me sad. Yeah, it really does. Even the 2000s were kind of good, honestly, but... Jesus Christ, rock is dying. Most of the top, top 10 are pop songs, exactly. This indie pop smash, I'm sorry, I came here for rock, exactly. <laughs> so Par Paramore, 30 seconds to Mars, make the honorable mention, but fucking Hozier makes the actual list. Well, I guess rock is that. I mean, much more just retarded, honestly. I mean, Paramore, 30 Seconds to March. I don't like 30 Seconds to March, but at least they are rock acts, so fucking hell, mate. Come a little closer, no rock song. Madness is no rock song. Pump Top Kicks is no rock song. Radioactive first rock song on, the, on this in my mind is not a rock song, in my opinion, but sure. Rope, this is so rock. This so is rock, so. What? This is. This so is rock, no question at What is that? How? What is that fucking title right there? This so is rock, no question asked. Jesus Christ, that's so, so no rock song. Is this a joke? It's perhaps a rock song, but only if you're a pussy. <laughs> it's probably something that I would say. Tighten up, A, hey, not, not rock to me. Um, the, 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 how is it called? The Black Keys, that's a rock song, fuck off. Do I wanna know, honestly I don't even want to know if people consider this rock. Uh, it's more like indie pop to me, for sure. Considering considering your picks for this list, still from All Nations should be top three. Never heard of that band, so, you know, it's probably not a chart topper. Hozier is not rock, I think th uh, this is the shittier list you have released. I was expecting really good new bands to listen to, but this is Full of pop artists, I'll stay with Muse and Foo Fighters, thank you. I mean, yeah, those two bands, uh, Arctic Monkey, I mean, there were some rock bands on there, but not a lot. Who said rock was dead? Marilyn Manson, and after this list, I, 
I'm thinking it was right. I'm thinking he was right. It was Gene Simmons for sure. The description should be who called this rock exactly. Yeah, just everyone complaining that it's not rock. Also known as Tumblr music, not rock. I mean, Tumblr fan base. I mean, all of those fucking people kill yourself, honestly. Tumblr is the worst thing ever. If this is. If this is the list, rock songs of 2010s, definitely the rock is dead. Unu. Whatever that means. I mean, it's it's by, it's by GNR fan, so yeah, of course it's inconsistent and incoherent. Like the fucking lead singer. So where is the rock? Ooh, by some, somebody with a Doom Pro picture, that's pretty good. This is one weird list, I agree with Arctic Monkeys, Foo Fighters and Muse. Rock is definitely dead. I mean, it's kind of a joke now, isn't it? If this is the best, Rock is dead. Yeah, everybody is just saying, oh, Rock is dead, Rock is dead, Rock is dead. So, I'm gonna end with that. Uh, the conclusion of this video, Rock is dead. So, Gene Simmons, you are right. Um, I'm gonna buy your vault now because, you know, you are right and I'm wrong and you're a rich person and I'm not, I'm broke as fuck, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, Gene Simmons should should just become our god and just rule this entire empire with his Kiss Army fans and just rule the entire nation. Yeah, um, thank you for watching this video. Let me know what do you think of this list. Uh, let me know what should uh, be on the list, what should uh, go off of it, you know. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless, safety care and peace.